All right, so we're going to pull that cover off here. Nope, wrong way. I want to look through it. There's a hole right there. I don't see anything in there that could be a bother. Slip off now. Some of the, uh, especially the L head versions of these, the old flathead uh, single cylinders, they usually these have a little groove cut in the bottom side of them. It looks like this wire's been chewed up, it's been taped all to hell. I might have to replace the coil, maybe. Sure, hope not. That'd be annoying. Oops. Got another bolt on this side. It is a different size than what I have. Funny how that works. Probably a three eighths. Yep, of course. Random three eighths. Should be one more bolt on the other side. Huh. Is an odd. Oh. <laughs> Sorry guys, I guess I didn't get that in shape there. My fault. Alright, let's move it all to the other side here. Hear the dogs barking. The neighbor's dogs. And it should be. I don't want to pull the dipstick with my. Alright. Yeah, I don't want to pull the dipstick out because it looks like it's already been done once before. I think that's where the oil is leaking from. down there. Yep, actually fairly clean underneath there. Uh, oh boy. Starting to get into the front stuff here. Looks like somebody's wrapped that wire up. It was arcing right there before. Uh, I wonder if I should just go ahead and replace the coil. I'd rather not. They've been running good. I'll rewrap that with some more tape, maybe. It should be fine. Let's go ahead and pull that fuel tank off, though. We got two screws on this side, two screws on the other side. Second verse, same as the first. Yeah, just hit that. Make that nice dong. I'm sure that fuel level gauge right there works real well with this cloudy tank. Too bad there's not much of a way of fixing it. I've heard people using bleach. Um, hydrogen peroxide and UV light might do it. That'd be a lot of hydrogen peroxide. Looks like this panel is going to have to be unscrewed. There we go. Sorry, that wasn't the best shot in the world, was it? Basically, I took these screws out on this side and that side to lift, to lift this up. Uh, what we're looking for right now is any cracks or anything because it's empty, which has got me concerned. 
Now, most times with these being what they are, you can fix them one of two ways. Melt them back together, which you just heat it up with a little bit of heat, or a lot of heat, and just kind of push, mesh the uh, plastic back together where the crack is, or you JB weld it. And I've had success with both. So, we'll give this tank a thorough rinse and we'll use water to make sure it's dried completely. I don't see any damage in there, so I don't think it'll be much of a problem. Yeah, we'll take a quick look on the inside here. I'm going to give a shot in there. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I don't see any chewed up wiring. This looks like the wiring for the headlights that this machine doesn't have. That was not an option, I guess, that year. But we're going to have to get all that dirt and old grass out of there. We'll give it a good solid washing. That way we don't have to worry about it rusting out the back side there. Neat. Created more work for myself. Sweet. This is what I always love to do. So... We'll take it outside, I think, tomorrow and give it a solid wash and they'll, they'll spread it. I gotta go get a couple bottles of Simple Green or Zep or whatever. Good cleaner and get my hands on, spray it down and give it a good hosing. So, till next time, everybody, we'll uh, bring it back and we'll have hopefully the new carburetor in here and this all cleaned up and we'll go from there. We'll see y'all in a moment. And we're back again. It's been a couple days. We got a new carburetor. I actually got, already installed it. I forgot to replace the batteries. And apparently missed a good chunk of that. So, stepping back where we are. Uh, essentially what we're going to be doing right now is finishing installing the carburetor. Some key points. Install your linkages before you bolt the carburetor on there. It makes life a lot easier. Don't forget your gasket. And don't over torque these, thrut, these um, studs here because they go into basically a knurled thread that mounts inside that's made inside this plastic and if you tighten it too hard it will strip out and you'll never get it tight ever again and it sucks so back where we're at um, fuel tank has been cleaned cleaned the inside cleaned the outside cleaned the whole mower got everything out of there um, fixed the well I, I retaped it and put this uh, rubber old rubber fuel line around this to keep it from uh, pinching on this ever again and we're going to go ahead and restall the uh, engine cover here so let's make you a little bit taller or yeah that's good enough right there right y'all don't need the best seat sights in the world We just gotta put the put this all back together again, the air box. You gotta put the crankcase vent tube in here. It's necessary, so run it. 
Uh, I've seen people they usually just yank the the, the hose, and then it ends up getting oil mist all over the side of the motor, and that's going to create a mess. I've seen other people they've blocked it, and that usually causes overpressurization in the uh, crankcase because it has no place to vent to, which causes its own issues. So just do it as the factory did it. You're not going to outsmart engineers that went to school and are way smarter than you. They did it for a reason. Just go with it. So let's get this back on there. All the holes line up good. Now it's sitting in there nice. Again, don't over torque this stuff. Tight it snugly and evenly. That way you don't create a vacuum leak. Now a vacuum leak before the carburetor probably won't cause that much of an issue. But remember this is plastic. You have a rubber seal. Rubber is very Pliable. There we go. All right. We'll leave the air cleaner off. Next thing we gotta do, we gotta run the fuel line. Let's connect our solenoid. We'll make sure that works. Battery should be plugged in. All right, sorry for a quick shut off there. It is time for post dinner working now. It's a beer too. Uh, Alright. We're going to work on the fuel line now. Uh, don't mind the rain and the thunder in the background. It started storming now. Uh, best way i found to do fuel line, and it's really simple, but I've seen so many people screw it up by cutting it too short. This is the supplied fuel line that gave me the quarter inch fuel line. Uh, I went ahead and bought a better fuel filter than the one they gave me. Uh, those cheap ones. I've actually had them leak before. They don't, and I don't trust them. They actually work really well. This is a better filter right here. Um, it's basically just mock up either one end or the other. I'm going to go with this one because this has a nice little J bend in there and a little 90 degree bend. And since this comes straight out instead of the old uh, carburetor, it came uh, out the back, this makes it a little better to work with. Now we're not going to put it on all the way. That way we have to fight it. And we got to figure out where we're going to route this fuel line. Let me grab the new fuel line. We had a little extra. So, basically, we just got to figure out where we want it. And, oh, where you, there we go. And I think I want it running underneath. That way it has places to go. And from there, we just want to mark it with, uh, what do I have on me to mark it? I don't have my phone on me. <clears throat> Alright, big colors. Alright, anyways, uh, we don't go crazy. We don't just rat on the ground stuff. Uh, this seems to be a pretty good spot, but we don't want to run it too tight. We don't want to cut it too short. So always cut yourself a little extra length. That way, whatever you have, you can always cut a little bit more off, but you can't add back. Nah, I've been there before. There, let's try to get a better angle. There we go. You guys realize that? Yep, there goes that thunder again. Alright, we cut the hose. 
I think this is a good spot right there. Eh, probably run a little bit tighter. Matter of fact, I think we'll cut a little bit off this end here. These uh, aircraft snips are just plain handy to have. They stay sharp for a long time and they open up wide enough to easily cut a lot of different things. There we go. And what we'll probably do is I'll probably zip tie it up. That way it keeps it out of the way. Um, this is not going to be a bother. The cable runs on the inside of that. But I think that's what we're going to do. So bear with me for a moment. I'm going to take this apart and then I am going to put hose clamps on everything and make sure nothing moves again. Be right back. Alright, here's another tech tip right here. Don't fill up your uh, the fuel tank all the way when you go to start these up for the first time. Especially if you're not 100% sure how it's going to run. Because you don't want to run into an issue where... Oop, sorry, camera there. You don't want to run into an issue, something goes wrong, now you got to drain your fuel tank. If you have positive fuel going through the filter there, nothing's leaking out. There we go, solenoid just opened up. Best way to test for them is just turn the key on, you usually feel or hear it click. Now let the fuel bowl lie fill up. From there, we'll see if she starts on her own. Might need a little bit of uh, persuasion with uh, the ether. Transmission definitely works. She's a little smoky, but she runs. All right, we got some popping in there that could be needed a valve adjustment. Uh, the throttle is definitely not working smoothly. Uh, most likely, I think I'm missing a return spring on there. I'm gonna have to take a look at it. Take a look back at the original footage too and see where we're at. But so far everything works. So I'm gonna cut out right now. I'm gonna go do some research, see if I'm missing a return spring. Because I noticed before the throttle isn't returning. It probably needs some idle and some idle uh, adjustment too. Idle mixture adjustment. So, uh, catch back with you all in a moment here. Okay, but we're back everybody. Um, I ran the lawnmower a little bit uh, today. Just to drive around to see how it runs. It does have a hard start problem. Which uh, was kind of evident in the last few scenes. Where it would hit a spot. And it's kind of like trying to get over a... A hill I guess you'd call it a rough spot um, that's usually a sign of valves acting up especially with the back firing and things like that so what we're going to do today is adjust the valves um, we're going to adjust the intake it's probably going to be the most important that's usually the sign that the hard start issue is usually a sign of the valves being the intake valve being out of adjustment but let's move on to it um, if I recall correctly, this looks like the exhaust valve right here, and this should be the intake. Right? Crossover. Yep. Uh, easy swipe. Let me see if I can get a good shot for that. Uh, for the, this kind of motor right here, is the, the valve that's going to directly control what it is. So you got your exhaust port right there. That's going to go to your uh, exhaust valve. 
this should be your intake now you can see the intakes up over here but if you look behind here and it's hard to see you kind of see the screwdriver goes down in there you can see the intake comes down into here and there it uh, is your intake so what we're going to do is adjust the valve I'm going to get a good shot for you uh, plenty of videos online for this probably better videos out there um, found top dead center by uh, just rock taking the spark plug out and rocking the engine back and forth until I finally got top dead center and we got Let's say this is a T20. Yeah, this is a T20 star drive, and I believe a 10 millimeter. Because I was going to try 3 8 but apparently 3 8 don't work. And this is one of those brilliant parts where you're starting to see a crossover between a standardized Imperial uh, nuts and bolts to a metric. Because some of the stuff is in metrics, and some of them are in USC. So, uh, what we're going to do is set the intake to. Uh, when I looked it up, uh, in, intake clearance should be 0 0.004 to 0 0.006. We're going to go 0 0.004, we're running a little bit on the tight side. And for the exhaust, it's 0 0.005 to 0 0.007. And again, we're going to go to five thousandths. So, first off, let's see where we're at on it. Now, intake wise, that is super tight. That would definitely be a problem. And for the exhaust, eh, it's pretty tight too. Yeah, yeah. So, and most likely that's just from carbon buildup around the valve. It is usually what causes the valves to get tight over time. Let's see here if I recall. There we go. Alright, so we are messing with the exhaust first. I meant to go for the intake first, but whatever. Um, you just want to create a nice drag. Come on. There we go. Uh, come on. I kind of like to get it to a point that it will support... Looser. Trying to find that little sweet spot. There it is. That it's just barely holding on to the feeler gauge there. And just hold it in place while you tighten down. There we go. And the, yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah, that's a little too loose so let's loosen that back up well there we go all right let's get that back in there got a little bit of oil on it because put an oil pan down below don't be me Sometimes what will happen is when you tighten, regardless if you hold it nice and still, it will still loosen up, so we're going to split the difference a little bit. There we go. That's good right there. And then for the intake, 0 0.004. Yeah, that's nowhere close. set out because I think these are supposed to be set to like 45 pounds. My little rigged up system here. There we go. That's much better. Yeah, yeah um, torque rating is think like something pretty crazy. It's like 45 pounds. We'll see. I don't want to go and snap anything off. So we'll see how that kind of works out. Wow, that was really tight. Alright. 
Now you can go a little bit tighter than spec if you're really still having issues because some of these have an auto uh, decompression right there. That is the money right there. Come on. Well, that might have just loosened it up a little too much. Yeah, it's a little too loose. Yeah, you gotta find that little bit of difference because sometimes. Still feels a little loose. Right there. Alright. So let's hold this in place. there and then we gotta get the point five back out again make sure that stays where it needs to where did my bit go there it is keep losing stuff Alright guys, valve should be adjusted now, feel a lot better, a little more snugger. So let's go ahead and we'll put everything back together. Unfortunately it's night time now, I can't go start it up so it's going to have to wait till tomorrow to get back to running again. A uh, little tip, uh, little tricks here and there, I'll show you about putting this valve cover on. We didn't rip the gasket but we got to get this nice and clean here. Uh, I'm not against using brake clean to use it. Brake clean dissolves quickly and doesn't affect oil, but it does a great job of cleaning oily surfaces up. So, well, let's get all the oil out of there, out of our way. Because what we're going to do is the valve cover gasket is in good shape. We got all the oily surface off there, but you don't want to spray any chemicals on there because you may damage the uh, gasket material itself. You don't want to crank these down very hard because they're made of sheet metal. They bend very easily. I've done it plenty of times in the past. Matter of fact, the Husqvarna, they sell a new style valve cover that's been re that you can use that's got a thicker railing around the uh, perimeter of the cover with extra bracing to keep you from uh, accidentally bending it happen so often. Alright, we're going to use a little bit of RTV. And we're going to just spread it real thin across there. We don't want a, want a massive amount that will squeeze off and possibly get into our oil. So we're just going to do a thin layer that we're going to hand flatten across. Make sure, like I said, you got the oil off of there because otherwise it doesn't stick very well. This is the one problem people have. They try to solve all their problems with RTV and it isn't. It's a gas, it helps gasket seal. Now you've seen me do it before with the uh, Husqvarna where I have made a gasket out of it. And you can. You can make a really good gasket in there when used appropriately. And the best way to use that is to let it sit before you torque it down. Like I put a, thi a thick bead that became a silicone, uh, a thick silicone layer. 
and then I tighten it down. But I let it get on there first, put it on there, and then tighten it down like an hour or so later. Very carefully put that back on there. There we go. Now normally I would put Loctite on these. But what I'm going to do is get this in place first with two bolts. Yep. Now I got this all upside down. Yes, I do. Look at the big brain on this guy. Alright. Like I said, we don't want to tighten it down right now. We want it to let it sit for a little bit. So, I'm going to finish putting this back together. I'm going to leave the hood off for the time being. Make sure we have any leaks. Because if we have any leaks, i got to fix them quickly. Sooner rather than later. So, check with me in a little bit. Hopefully it will be tomorrow. And we will have this engine running. And hopefully running a whole lot better than it already has. So, we'll see you in a moment.